for getting math methods and concepts, for getting things in math in general when you're taking a test, when you're doing your homework. How can you help increase your memory of mathematical definitions, mathematical concepts? In this video, we're going to discuss that, but I want to start by saying one thing. I believe that I personally have a terrible memory. I think I'm a person that does not have a great memory and I've been able to learn a lot of things in my life. So hopefully after watching this video, I can impart some of the things that I do to help learn mathematics and other things and maybe they can help you. This video is 100% inspired by a subscriber here on the channel. His name is Mark and he sent me a message uh, via my website mathsorcerer.com. The subject is forgetting the methods and concepts. The message says the following, hey man, what's up? Hope you're fine. So I had this question that I kind of forget methods of doing mathematical problems and also forget concepts like let's say epsilon delta definition of a limit. I think it's because of lack of practice. I love maths and I love doing it, but I don't know. I just kind of fall back when doing problems. And also, I don't seem to have confidence in my answer. I tend to hide it from my classmates and teacher. Need your help. So Mark, I have all kinds of advice. <laughs> so I have all kinds of things I can say. And if you have any comments for Mark, leave some comments in the comment section below because when you leave comments, not only does it help Mark, but it helps other people who find this video on the internet and are trying to remember methods and things they learn in math. So different people learn differently, Mark. And I am not like a, a superhuman expert on you know learning. I'm just a regular person who, again, I don't think I have a great memory and I have an average IQ and I, I know some mathematics. So how was I able to learn math and remember things? Well, first let's address your comment about epsilon delta. When I first learned the epsilon delta definition of a limit, I had no idea what was going on. I remember there was this kid in class, he, he dressed weird, he, like one of the goth kids, like he dressed all in black and he looked different from the other kids in class, from the other students. And I just basically copied his answers when we did the worksheet that day. He just let me copy. It was a group thing. So, but I had no idea what was going on. It wasn't un until I think I was in graduate school or no, no, no. Yeah. Graduate school that I really, really, really under start started to understand calculus. The definition of the limit. I didn't really get that until I think advanced calculus. Uh, as an undergraduate. That's when I really, really started to get it. But it took me that long. It took me years. So the fact that you're mentioning this in your email just makes me have some hesitation. I, th I think that you're probably better than you think you are because you're pointing out one of the hardest things to learn uh, in a calculus class conceptually, the epsilon delta definition. That is one of the hardest things for calculus students to learn. And again, I never learned it. I took the full calculus sequence I didn't understand it. It wasn't until years later that, that I finally grasped it. So, so what can you do to learn concepts? So what I do, and what I think is very, very important to do every time you're doing any type of mathematics, is when, when you are doing a problem on your own, okay, like at your house or in a library or at a friend's house, and you have a pen or a pencil and, and, and something to write on, what you wanna do is you always wanna make sure you can do the problems without looking at your notes or resources, okay? If you ever have to look at that definition of a limit, then you need to sit down and you need to write it down without looking at it. And if you have to look at it, then you look at the definition, you write it down on a piece of paper while you're looking at it. And then you read it a couple times, and then you take another piece of paper, and then you try to write it down again without looking at it. If you have to look, you cheat and look, and you keep doing this over and over again until you can write down that definition without looking at it. Then every time you have to do a proof, and I'll just use this as an example because it's a good one, a proof where you're trying to prove a limit exists or something, you should write down that definition on the side 
Don't just look at your notes and look at the definition. That doesn't count. Always rewrite it. It's kind of like when you first learn the quadratic formula. I'm sure you know this one, right? Most people watching um, this video know the quadratic formula. But every single time you would write it down, right? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all under 2A, right? You write that down every single time, right? And that's how you learn. And I was very fortunate, Mark, that I learned this very early on. In my first college class, okay, ever, which was a class before intermediate, like it was like remedial math. They don't use that word anymore. I think they call it developmental math. But I was really bad at math, so they put me in like the lowest math class, or one of the lowest, and our teacher said, there's this old guy, he says, every time you're doing a problem, you know, write down that equation. And I remember going home and sitting at the kitchen table at like 9.30 o'clock at night, because I had a job, and so I was taking a night class, and I was doing, you know, the slope. M equals, you know, Y sub two minus Y sub one, all divided by X sub two minus X sub one, right? Rise over run. And I would write it down every single time, and that's how I learned the formula, or even like, y equals mx plus b, a very simple equation of a line. Every single time you write it down, the epsilon delta definition is no different. And it gets deeper and it gets harder because the further you go in math, the more things you have to memorize, and it's not just formulas, it's also propositions and theorems because you have to use them to prove other things. And again, the way I've always done it is I just always write it down. And if I ever have to reference my notes or, or a book, no, you don't really know it. It needs to be up here, okay? A lot of times people will say, and this is a common criticism of, of having to memorize things, and, it, and it's a good one, they'll say, oh, well, why do I need to know that? Because in the real world, I can just look it up, or in the real world, I have the internet. It's true, it's true, this is true, but the point of you going to college, I mean, other than you know getting a degree and that can help you get a job so it can help you financially and all that stuff, is to learn, right? For you to learn, not for you to say, oh, hey, it's on the internet. No, learn, learn as much as you can, right? Learn, it, it, it matters, it makes a difference. Knowledge is really power and, and there's all kinds of knowledge, right? There's not just math, but other types, but that, that's for another video. Mark, I think this will help you. I think if you write it down every single time, every single time, you will be able to conquer your, your forgetting of mathematics. Another simple example is trig, right? The sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. That is something that plagues students in trig and calculus for, for eternity, it plagues people because they don't memorize it, but you just have to memorize it, right? And when you do, life gets better. You'll be able to take those tests and you'll be able to get an A. You'll be able to not hide from your classmates and teachers. You'll be able to have confidence in your answers, right? Because you know the material. So know it cold, right? It's gotta be like breathing. Every time you see a problem and you do it and you have to look at your book or your notes, you don't really know it. Do it again, over and over again, until you can do it without looking. And that's how you learn mathematics. Unfortunately, that takes a lot of time. So yeah, that's, that's my answer. Um, if, if anyone else has advice for Mark, leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, I have courses. They're on Udemy, which is a reputable place to have courses. But if you get them, please use my links uh, from the description of this video or from my website because I've lowered the prices and it helps me greatly. Also, if you wanna learn math through books, I have a few books uh, on eBay, I should have a few. Uh, check out my eBay store, uh, it's uh, link is in the description of this video. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.